This is Professor Pelton. This is part three of chapter two, section six. So before we were doing equations that involved um, fractional exponents, now we'll do from the other perspective in radical form, which means there's a radical involved. So essentially you can rewrite the radical as a um, exponent, a fractional exponent. We're gonna keep it as a radical and solve it as is. Okay, so always try to do isolations first. So I'm gonna try that. So I'm gonna minus three. So two root x plus one equals four, right? So I did level four first. I'm gonna divide by two. So root x plus one equals two, right? So that's level three, which is multiplying and dividing. So again, always try to do isolation, uh, only do factoring if you have to. So the other key of the trick was isolation is there's only one exponent of, or one power of x, which is actually one half. So now I wanna cancel this. So x plus one squared equals two squared. This is level two, which is exponents and radicals. So an exponent cancels a radical. So I'm left with x plus one equals four. I'm gonna put parentheses around this. So one thing I didn't list in the um, order of operations was the radical symbol. The radical symbol is a grouping symbol. So whether it's written or not, there is actually assumed grouping symbols inside the radical. So when you drop the radical, you need to put grouping symbols around all the stuff that's in there. So I actually do have a level one grouping symbol, which is the minus the one. So I get X equals to three. Okay, so keep that in mind. Absolute values, parentheses, brackets, and also radicals and a few other things that I didn't list are also a grouping symbols technically. Okay, so let's uh, add one here. So four times the third root of two x minus nine equals oh, eight. So that's level four, adding and subtracting. I'm gonna divide by four. This level three is multiplying and dividing. So the third root of two X minus nine equals two. Okay, so the next is level two, which is exponents and radicals. Well, I need to cancel a third root. So you do that with a third power. So two to the third, push you to one side, do the other. So again, two X minus nine needs a grouping symbol, All right? This radical is a grouping symbol. So level one, the last step in order of operations is the grouping. So I'm gonna add nine. So two X equals 17 and I'll divide by two. So X equals 17 halves, okay? All right, pause the video, try the student problems for yourself. Okay, so I'm gonna add four. So two root X plus 25 equals four. So that's level four, right? Adding and subtracting. Level three is multiplying and dividing. So I'm gonna divide by two. So I'm left with a radical X plus 25 equals two. Level two is exponents and radicals. So I'm gonna square both sides. So I'm left with X plus 25 equals four. And then level one is grouping symbols. I'm gonna minus 25. So X equals negative 21. There we go. Okay, so second problem, I'm gonna minus six. So two third roots of X minus three equals four. So that's level four, adding and subtracting. I'm gonna divide by two. So I get the third roots of X minus three equals two. So that's level three. And I'm going to do exponents, so third power to both sides. That's level two, so I get x minus three is equal to eight. Then level one, grouping symbols, add three, so x equals 11. Okay, so each of these involved a singular power of x or a single radical of x either way. So it ended up being isolation strategy each time because of that fact. Okay. So sometimes you got to involve factoring and you could get extraneous solutions, which means basically one of the solutions you get is not actually a valid solution because it doesn't actually satisfy the original equation because of the problems with radicals, as you'll see when we go through here.
So isolation will not work here because I have x to the first power and I have x to the half power, right? Because the radical over here, right, is x to the half power, correct? So what I want to do here is use a different strategy. So I'm going to square this side and I'm going to square this side because the square cancels the square root. So I'm left with um, x plus 1 times x plus 1 equals 7x plus 15, right? So I have x squared plus 1x plus 1x plus 1, when I fa uh, factor it out, equals 7x plus 15. Okay, so I'm going to subtract the 7x to the other side, so I'm going to get x squared. So 1x plus 1x is 2x, minus 7 is negative 5x. And I have 1 minus 15 is minus 14. Okay, so what this ends up being is a factoring problem. Okay, so 1x, 1x, it's divided by 1, but I'm not going to write that this time. 1 times 14 is negative 14 which is 1 times 14, 2 times 7. But one of these needs to be negative, correct? 1 times 14, 2 times 7. Okay, so what we're trying to get here is negative 5. So clearly that's the right answer. So positive 2 minus 7. Okay, so x plus 2 is 0, and x minus 7 is 0. So x equals negative 2 and x equals 7. Okay, so before I check, oh, that's a bad 2. Let me fix that 2 real quick, and then we'll check to see if these are actually answers or if any of these are extraneous. Okay, so if I plug in the 7 up here, I'm going to get 49 plus 15, which is 64. That works. If I plug in the negative 2 up here, though, that's going to give me 14, negative 14 plus 15 is 1. But the problem is, if I plug in negative 2, I'm going to get negative 2 plus 1, which is negative 1, right? And the problem is with that is the square root on the right side can never be negative. That's not possible. That's not an answer. This is the only answer. So this answer right here, the negative 2, is actually extraneous, right? So that is extraneous. Can you plug that in? It doesn't work in the original equation. Right, plug it in, doesn't work, because you get negative on the left, and you can't do the square root of negative on the, on the right. Okay, so B is a little more complicated, because now when I square both sides, that's not going to get rid of the square root on the left initially, because what's going to happen, since there's two terms there, is I'm going to get root x plus 2 plus 1 times root x plus 2 plus 1, on the left side, we're good, or the right side, rather, because I just get 3x minus 2, because it's a radical and an exponent, and that's it. There's no other uh, addition terms to worry about, essentially. Okay, so now when I multiply, I'm going to get uh, root x plus 2 squared, right? And then plus 1 root x plus 2, and then go on the other side, plus 1 root x plus 2, and underneath here, I get plus 1 equals 3 minus x. Okay, so this gives me x plus 2. This gives me 2 root x plus 2 plus 1 equals 3 minus x. So I'm going to get all the non-radical terms of the right-hand side. So I'm going to subtract, so I'm going to be left with 2 root x plus 2 on this side equals. So I have an, I have an x over here on the left and an x on the right, so that's going to give me minus 2x. I have a, a 2 and a 1 for 3 on the left, and I have a 3 on the right. So if I subtract those, I get 0, right? Because that this and this gives me 3. Take that away from there, I get 0. Okay, so now I'm left with just the radical on the left. So now what I'm going to do is square this. You can divide by 2 first if you want, either way. It's not going to make any difference. The point is I got the radical by itself. I don't know why that had happened like that. Let me just fix that. Okay. There we go. Okay. So I got the radical by itself, which is the point. I need to get rid of the addition. That's the problem. If you have an addition, it ends up being a distri distribution problem. But now I have no addition. 
so it's not a distribution problem. So I get 4 times x plus 2 equals 4x squared, right? All right, so if I distribute that, I get 4x plus 8 equals 4x squared. Okay, so I have two different exponents of x. I have x to the first power and x to the second power, which means this has to be a factoring problem. So 4x squared, I'm going to move everything from the left to the right, minus 4x minus 8. So always look to factor out a common factor first. So 0 equals 4. So I have x squared minus 1x minus 2. Let's make a better x than that. OK, so that's a 1. All right, so 0 equals 4. So 1x, 1x. It's all over 1, but I'm not going to write that. So 1 times negative 2 is negative 2 which is 1 times 2 or 1 times 2. One of these needs to be negative, right? I'm trying to get negative 1, so that's clearly the one right there. So positive 1 minus 2, OK? So now I'm fully factored. So it means 0 equals 4, right? Which that's not true. Come on, 4. That's not a really good 4. Uh, x plus 1 is 0, or x minus 2 is 0, right? So x is negative 1, or x is 2 if I add 2. I don't know if I'm just going to write x equals 2. OK, so the question is, are those both answers? Well, if I go back to the original problem and I plug in 2, that's going to give me 3 minus 2 on the right, which is 1. That sounds good. If I plug in 2 on the left, that's 2 plus 2 is 4. Square root of 4 is 2 plus 1 is 3. Hmm, hold on a second here. That doesn't seem right. Let's do that again. So 2 plus 2 is 4. So square root of 4 plus 1 equals, if I plug in the 2, I get the square root of 3 minus 2. Well, on the left-hand side, I get 3. On the right-hand side, I get 1. That can't be true, right? If I plug in negative 1, I'll get the square root of 1 plus 1 equals the square root of 4, right? If I plug in the negative 1. So that actually works. So this is the actual answer. This one is not. Okay, so the reality is the negative 1 is the only actual answer. The negative 2 is extraneous. All right, pause the video. Try the student problems for yourself. Okay, so in both cases, neither they both have mixed bags of exponents, right? The, this one has 1 half and 1, so these are not isolation. So what I'm going to do is square both sides. So I'm left with 10x plus 9 equals x plus 3 times x plus 3, right? So the left side's nice because radicals cancel exponents, right? But I have to do uh, exponents on the, on the right. So I have 10x plus 9 equals x squared plus 3x plus 3x plus 9 when I distribute everything, right? So I'm going to move everything to the right. So I have 0 equals x squared. So 3x plus 3x is 6x minus the 10x on the other side is minus 4x, correct? And then 9 and 9 cancels. That's what I'm left with. Interesting. So I really get plus 0, correct? So 0 equals... All right, so 1x and 1x. So I have 1 times 0 is 0. So there are infinite things that give me 0. So what I want is 0 times negative 4. So positive 0 and negative 4, because I'm trying to get negative 4x, right? So that's an easy one, since there's infinite things that give me 0. So x plus 0 equals 0, and x minus 4 is equal to 0. So if I add 4 x is equal to 4, and x is equal to 0. All right, so double check the answers, see if they actually work. Well, if I plug in 0, I get the square root of 9 equals 3. That works. If I plug in a 4, I'm going to get 40, square root of 49, which is 7, equals 7. These are both answers. You're like, wait a minute, last time we got extraneous answers. <laughs> you don't always get extraneous answers. Sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. This is a case where we don't. All right, so next one. I'll do the same thing. Since I have a mixed bag, I'm going to square both sides. So on the right side, it's easy, but the left side is a 
uh, additions have a little bit of a problem there. So x plus 6 minus 2 times root x plus 6 minus 2 equals x minus 2. Okay, so we're going to distribute. So this gives me root x plus 6 squared minus 2 root x plus 6. Go underneath, minus 2 root x plus 6. And then uh, minus 4. Now let's see, no, that's double negative. That's positive 4, excuse me, x minus 2. So I'm left with x plus 6 minus 4 root x plus 6 plus 4 equals x minus 2. Okay, so the goal here is to get rid of the radicals and we only get rid of one. So I'm going to get everything that's not a radical on the right hand side. So if I subtract the x's, they go away. All right, so I'm left with negative 4 root x plus 6 equals, right? Because the x, I have 1x on this side and 1x on this side, they go away. And then 6 and 4 is 10. So 10 minus that's what? Negative 12, right? Because I move 6 and 4 over to there. Okay, so now what you notice is we don't actually need to factor here. Because of the fact this is only a singular value of x, we can actually do the isolation method. You could square again if you want to, but it's not. we don't need to do that x. So it's x plus 6 equals 3. Then I'll square both sides. x plus 6 to the second power equals 3 to the second power. So I have x plus 6 is equal to 9. Then I'll minus 6. So x is equal to 3. And you're like, well, I got one answer. It must, it must work, right? Well, let's double check. If I plug 3 into the right, I'm going to get 3 minus 2 is 1. Square root of 1 is 1. So on the right-hand side, I get 1 as an answer, right? I get 1 here. On the left-hand side, what do I get? If I plug in 3, I get 9. Square root of 9 is 3. Minus 1 is 1. So that actually works. So in neither of these cases I get an, that I get an extraneous answer. So don't expect that. Look, check for it, but they don't always expect you should have one, essentially. And I used factoring and isolation, depending on what the case called for. That is the end of part three.